But I think one of the one of the issues too is that we and Western reporters go in there and just like we all laughed when I said they can't write, you know they can't shoot they can't drive they can't read have our own ideas about what troops should be. So there are, I guess my question is, are they good enough? Well, as a minimum standard, they've got to be better than the Taliban. And uh, they're much better than the Taliban. I, 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 having spent a lot of time with Afghan forces, in the final six months that I was the commander, uh, the term called battlefield circulation, where you go out and you spend time in the field, uh, my battlefield circulation was almost entirely to Afghan units. And I would typically go to that unit uh, meet the commander, meet the principal staff officers, and I would ask them several questions. I would ask them, how many of your troops are absent without authority, UA? Uh, and how many of your vehicles actually work? And how many of your weapons are broken? Those are real measures of a commander's ability to embrace his inherent responsibility for the logistics and maintenance of a unit. Uh, and some of those units were in pretty bad shape. Yes, there were attacks. Yes, they went after soft targets. Yes, those targets were intended to shake confidence of the international community and the Afghan citizens uh, in the election. Uh, but on the whole, uh, the amount of effectiveness of those attacks was relatively low in the great scheme of things. There were tragic casualties. There were you know, very sad uh, suicide attacks that, uh, that, were, that appeared to be effective at the point. But on the whole, the, the preponderance of Afghanistan was able to come out and, and vote in this election in very large numbers, which would seem to imply that even though the Taliban pursued what they'd hoped would be a program of violence and intimidation, they not only didn't intimidate the Afghans, in fact, the Afghans perhaps came to the uh, polls in greater numbers because they're so tired of this as the reality in which they live. Let, let's go back to my broader question, and I, I want to bring it to this organization. A lot of people in Asia society, especially members of Asia 21 Young Leaders Program, yes. are optimistic about the future. So they're, they're with you, I think. One said recently, young people hold the keys to success going forward, and most young people will never support the Taliban. They like what they are seeing now. Another said flatly, the Taliban can never win. I suspect you agree with those young people? Well, winning is, you know, comes in different forms. The Taliban are not going to win the ideological war. They're not going to win the moral war. Uh, they're never going to prove that they are the champions of the great faith of Islam. Uh, and they're not going to win the tactical fight. They just, they're just not going to. And this swath of the Afghan youth, which I think is uh, poorly understood in the West, uh, I think often... Uh, in the West, the first image of an Afghan is someone from the rural areas, and, and, and the sense is this is someone who's very unsophisticated and very poorly educated. By the way, I wouldn't attribute being uneducated and unsophisticated to any Afghan. They're pretty sophisticated people. But what's missed, I think, in the West is just how much of the Afghan population is young. Uh, it is uh, co-ed in so many ways. Uh, it is better educated than at any point in the history of this country. Uh, and they're all about a future where they, they will have opportunity. Now, I'm, uh, you've accused me of being an optimist. And, and <laughs>